Every time I present this presentation, there's always a technical problem. <laughs> I have no idea why. It almost seems like the human and the technology aspect doesn't go well. So well, I guess. I don't know. But I'm going to start again. So if you just look at the earlier presentation also, I remember I had a lot of technical glitches. But nevertheless, let's get on with it. So uh, what is your idea of what I'm sure most of you would have seen the presentation, right? So you guys know what you are in for. You have not? OK. So I'm going to give you another last opportunity to walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to. <laughs> because once the exercises are going to start, of course, I'm not going to bound you guys to be here. But however, it's nice if all of you are around because I'm going to do a few exercises where the team is involved. So I would like to have the team synergy built. Okay? Uh, so what do you guys think this session is going to be about? Like, what are we going to talk about? It's an agile conference, and I'm saying it's not an agile story. And I, I know you guys have paid for the conference thinking that it's going to be about agile. So what am I going to tell you now? What do you think we're going to do now? Any idea? Quick, quick. Like, I need a few pointers so that I get started. Oh, yes. Common themes about human problems. Okay, all right. What is your problem today? <laughs> That's a, oh my god. <laughs> that sounds very promising. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> the reluctance to change. Okay, people's reluctance to change. Okay, why do you think they're reluctant to change? Okay. Okay? Like that. So they're pretty comfortable with their status quo, right? Okay. So one interesting thing about change is like what I've felt in the past uh, six to seven years of coaching is it's not that people are against change. You know, what they don't like is when someone come and ask them to change. You know, if you just go tell them, you know, there's something that's not working for you guys, can you see, look into it and see what else can you do? I think most of them are okay with it. But the moment someone else comes and tells them, hey, why don't you do it this way? That's when you have a problem. So how many of you have problems that way? Somebody coming and telling you, change. The quick show of hands like there's nobody here. I don't think your managers are here. OK? So um, who really wants to change? It's like from, from within and all that, you know, whatever we call. Nobody wants to change. OK. So who, everybody who, is, who wants to change, can you please lift your hands? I want to see. I think you should lift it, right? So who is not a project manager here? One, two. Okay, all right. No, meaning in the particular lot, the ones who wanted to change and who is not a project manager. Anyone? Nice, okay, thank you. All right, so what else? So we had reluctance to change and what else? What else? Why do, what do you think the topic is going to be? Like, uh, normally in the projects, we entertain, uh, hmm. are, are following the water <coughs> Okay. 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 All right. Now what I'm asking is, what is this topic gonna be? I'm quickly getting a yeah, feedback so on. What I feel is like uh, uh, when, when I say that it's not an agile story always. Okay. So uh, my meaning is like uh -huh. maybe it is uh, like uh, we are always following some traditional approaches when some agile process gets fixed. Oh, like that. Oh, okay. I've never thought about it. Okay, good. Maybe. Yes. So, um, so I think you might walk out of the room, I'm thinking. <laughs> so anyway, so I'll just quickly tell you what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so what I've realized is, uh, so I've been in uh, information technology or IT for, like, for the past uh, eight to nine years, just a sec. With, uh, in our day-to-day -day work, you know, like say, uh, we talk about a lot of things, like say with respect to frameworks, with respect to processes. Uh, with respect to so many things, customers and everything. But what I've realized is one of the fundamental problems that each one of us invariably deal with in every organization is the immediate peer level issues. You know, like say, uh, my peer, my boss, my customer, what do they think about us and what is happening with them? So if you just look at it, the fundamental premise is most of these issues are very human being related aspects. <laughs> Let's say today, if you have a problem with your team members, if there's an issue in the team, what do we usually do? We just do some team building exercises. How many of you have done team building exercises here? All of us are spoiled that way, right? We always have a team building exercises. We just play some funny games and we all think that, oh, we're going to make a lot of change in our progress. But what is happening is, a lot of these things barely scratch the surface. You know, we really don't even get into the real nitty gritties of what we are, who we are, and what the team synergy is. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. And also I have one distress here, which is, uh, it mostly comes from the space that, uh, so I have, I have been trained in psychotherapy for some time. So I've realized that there's a lot of resources which is available in that community which is not necessarily being used in IT. 
And most of these tools they use, like be it NLP or be it any other school of thought, I think they're fantastic. So what I'm going to do is, today I'm going to introduce you to just one tool. I'm going to run a workshop around it. And I want all you guys to be part of it. And then let's see uh, if you can apply the tool in your teams as well. That's what I'm going to do. So you guys are free to walk out. So you guys know what the story is all about. So if it is not suiting your objective, it's up to you. Yeah, so let's begin. All right. So. Uh, yeah, so one of the popular uh, uh, dilemmas, you know, like say, be it any, any century, you know, like wherever it was, it has always been this thing about uh, the Apollo and Dionysus, you know, what is the dilemma all about? Uh, what is the classific, you know, Apollo and Dionysus, right? The Greek gods? No? Okay, Apollo and Dionysus are the Greek gods. Sorry? Dionysus, no? That's very interesting. You know why? Because Dionysus represents the human part or the emotions, or the human aspects that we talk about, and Apollo is the logical part. It's again the left brain and the right brain, so we have so many inferences, be it the yin and the yang, or be it your order and chaos, is black and red, there's a lot of metaphors which has been used to emphasize this. So this is one of the important aspects of working in a team. This seems familiar? This one? Everybody? If you just look at it, what is this? This is an agile question. Agile question. <laughs> Anybody? Agile manifesto. Agile manifesto, right? Have you seen it? Yes. yes. So if you look at the Agile Manifesto, right, all the aspects on the right, so we, we technically say that uh, all the elements on the left are like very important, but it doesn't mean that right you can just let go of it. You still need them. But if you just look at it carefully, you'll see that it's nothing but the same old classic dilemma that we're talking about. You know, the logic versus the human part. So even if you speak of Agile, it's nothing new. You know, all we're talking about is still that particular balance, how do we get that balance, right? So now, what is interesting here? So uh, in the last conference I was attending, like a lot of people were talking like how Agile is dead and there is nothing, uh, there's nothing revolutionary about it or that the people are a little bored of doing Agile. Uh, so how many of you have been practicing Agile for some time now, like a decade? Okay, five years? Five years? Okay, four, three, Two, one. So is Agile dead or alive? Or do you want to kill it? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, but what I believe is, uh, it's not technically dead, uh, but you know, it's all about finding that balance. You know, it is the same balance, it's the same dilemma that we all had for centuries, be it any model, be it any process, be it any organization, this is a common problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because all of us understand process, you know, we are very logical and most of us are super logical about things, we lay down things systematically and say this is how it has to be done. So I'm going to work on the other aspect of working in an organization, all right? So in my mind, right, like, you know, this is something I've, I've uh, come to realize that, uh, so even though we say that Agile is dead, like a lot of people believe that, FYI, uh, what I feel is uh, one hope that I'm left with is, today as a community we acknowledge that there is a need for both the aspects. You know, we are not plainly saying that, okay, we don't need these things, you know, I'm just going to look at the process, I'm just going to look at the framework and apply it as it is. You know, that's not the way we are looking at it. In fact, a couple of conversations I've had with a lot of people who are around here, like Sivsha and a lot of them, what I've realized is, again, their problems are not really about uh, the process process itself, but it all implies to how am I going to personalize it. So personalization is a big question today. So I'm going to talk about the human aspects now. All right, let me, I have been introduced already, but uh, I usually introduce myself as a greedy soul. Why? Because uh, I try to put my hands in multiple things, like say because I like doing multiple things. Uh, like besides being an agile coach, I also, you know, I, I have a book club, like work for an NGO, and like I'm also part of a, a Latin American dance team and stuff. So it gives a lot of perspectives. What is very interesting about what I've realized is being an agile coach in multiple other facets is you get to relate a lot of things. One of the aspects that I've related to is psychotherapy. That is what this topic is going to be. Uh, quick uh, credits. So this, all the paintings that you're seeing here uh, is by an artist called uh, uh, Shiloh Suleiman. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know her because she's, she's a very popular artist in Bangalore. Uh, I shouldn't say popular, but she, most people know her. Like, because uh, she has done a lot of interesting uh, artworks in the like graffitis and all that in the streets of Bangalore and hence a lot of people know her. She's a very fierce artist. I've used most of her paintings in all, in fact all the paintings are from hers. Some credit for her. And one small, uh, I know before I begin, I want you guys to take this session with a pinch of salt. 
You know, because uh, usually when I apply to a psychotherapy session, people don't say all these things very easily because it involves a lot of human elements. Uh, it requires a lot of maturity. But I'm going to trust you guys and I'm going to make few statements here which could be false, which need not be true. Take it with a pinch of salt, okay? Okay, so now what are the possible problems? So today when I say uh, we, are not, we are not really dealing with the human problems, it's not like we don't want to do it, but there are certain uh, constraints to it. One of the possible or the first and the foremost constraints is there is no tangible immediate result. You know, when we look at a process, when we look at anything, we want immediate results. You know, we want to show some numbers. We want to say how my cycle time is reduced. We want to say how my ROI is increased. But with people aspects, it's going to take a while. It's going to be a long-term investment and not too many people are willing to do it, right? Okay. Uh, so how many of you guys are into training, intraday, and like normal mutual funds and all that? I'm guessing all of you, right? No? Nobody invests in mutual funds here? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. That's very interesting, okay? It's only in mutual funds we always look at long term. You know, but when it comes to anything else, so I don't know how and why, but when it comes to anything else, when it comes to organizations and all that, we always look at quick results. You know, we want something really quick. But when it comes to mutual funds, we usually look at five years. Sorry? <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's a very interesting talk. Ah, so what if you have been allowed to decide? You'll make a decision like that? For example, you're talking about mutual funds or mm -hmm. internet dating. That is a decision on my own. I yes. Individual decision. Yes. So what is happening in the other front? That is a collective decision or maybe a decision that has come from the top, right? It's from the top. That's, that's a problem. Anyway, let's see. So let's go to the next one. Fear of confrontation. Because most of these problems are very sentimental. You know, like say we are really, really scared of confronting someone. So today, uh, when I think I remember this workshop I was attending. We were doing a trust workshop. I think it was in Agile India again. Uh, so one of the, the part of the speaker was asking us, let's say if you, if you know that one of the team members is like talking behind your back. You know, he was asking, what all things do you do in this situation? So what all things you guys would typically do? Give me examples. You don't have to be nice, you can just say what you actually do. Like say, if you know that, uh, if I'm your team member, you know that I'm talking something about you. Like I'm going and telling your master, you know what she's doing, this is what she's doing. So what will you do? How will you confront? Do you guys confront? I think confronting face to face is a better option. Is a better option, but do we use that option? Depends on if I use it. All right, okay, then. I think we don't use that. We don't use that option. Actually, that is the fact. You know, I, in fact, one of the funniest options I've heard is somebody said we'll go for a team outing. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Actually, in my team, there's a person who told me that we'll go for a team outing, everything will be sorted. You know? But anyway, the problem is we are not really, we don't want to confront because we don't want the other person to get hurt. If with all good intentions, it's not like to say I'm going to hide something from you. What is that? Okay, I'm just going to... Uh, is it fire? We are being told from childhood that don't do certain things, you know, like you said, uh, if the person is senior to you, if the person is older to you, don't ask certain things, you know, like the elders, you know, just, just respect them, that's all you have to do, whatever they say is true. I'm not saying don't respect your elders, I'm not promoting that, but however, there is a very common, or a, it's, it's a conditioning for all of us, especially in an Indian context, and it's very, very common, you know, we all believe that if the, pers if the person is elder to me, I really don't question them so much, there is a point where I stop, right? And then individual processes, individual processes I mean your own growing up situations, whatever morals and beliefs, everything that you have developed for yourself, you know, because of the friends that you had and you know, the experiences you had, all of it, right? So now these are very common problems for any individual. So what I'm going to do is, uh, there is a way to demystify it, uh, obviously to understand more about where these things are coming from. So we use a model called the OK OK Coral model. So I'm going to talk about transaction analysis, you guys know about this, Eric Byrne. 
There was a very popular pop psychology book in the US like in the 90s or 2000 times. It was called Games People Play. Uh, I think it was very, very popular because it was very easy for people to understand uh, psychology in a very easy way. So Eric Byrne is the father of transaction analysis. And uh, this particular model I'm going to talk about is called OK, OK, Coral. So it's a four quadrant model. So once I introduce the model to you, we're going to split into four teams and we're going to do some exercises. Is it fine? Everybody? Okay. So what is this model about? Any guess? Now that I'm saying it's okay, okay model, what does it mean? Win, lose, lose, win, right? Like, okay. So this model is divided into four quadrants, you know, like any model. Like, I always it's four quadrants. And we say that uh, it just talks about the individual versus the world. How we look at the world. You know, let's say if I can be the individual, I versus you guys, right? So the entire room and then me. So I might have an opinion that I'm okay, you're okay. When I say I'm okay, you're okay, by which I mean that I think everybody is fine. There is no basic problems to deal with. They are others and they can deal with what they want. That's an I'm okay, you're okay position. All right? And there's another position where I can think that I'm okay and you guys are not okay. All right? So in that case, we mostly talk about individuals who feel that, okay, I'm totally fine, I'm knowledgeable and all that, but people on the other side, they really don't know much about what it is. Right? And the third one is, uh, I'm not okay and you're okay. Meaning I feel that I'm not really okay but others are fine. And the last quadrant is, even I'm not okay and even you guys are not okay. Basically I feel that okay, the entire world is doomed. Alright, so these are the four basic categories of people that they generally clarify. So I have just given a few names to it just to make it easy for you guys. So I'm okay, you're okay, I'm going to call them as uh, pragmatic adult. And then I'm okay and you're not okay, I'm going to call them as insolent genius. And then I'm going to call, I'm not okay, you're okay as uh, distressed damsel. And then finally, I'm not okay, you're not okay as perennial cynic. Okay? So now what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to self-organize and divide yourself into equal number of teams, like say four teams with equal number of team members and go to each board. I have four boards here. So I want you guys to walk forward and then come to your respective boards. Good question. So what do you think, okay, in what sense? You, can you give me an answer? Do you think I'm okay? Okay, in what sense? All right. Okay. But I can be a psycho killer, for all you know. None of them appear to me. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> As a HR? Okay, otherwise I'm hopeless. <laughs> okay. What is? What is? But how did you derive those these assumptions? Because you guys hardly know me for like what? 20 minutes? 25 minutes? I have a profession. <laughs> so how do we derive on all these things? So that's the same way. There is no specific answer to it. They're very empirical. Uh, it's the way how you look at the world. You know, it's the way how you look at individuals. And it's going to differ from person to person. That's why I was saying the synergy of the group is very important. So when you guys start indulging in a discussion, you will see that how different people are perceiving things differently. So that's what we're going to do right now. So can we divide it into four teams? Or any other questions before that? Did I answer your question? Kind of. Yeah. Very smartly, I just didn't give it an answer. Yes. <laughs> All right. OK. Um, can you guys do that? So I'm not going to, I want you guys to self-organize. There are four boards here. Energy is not dissipated. See, right now, this is where all the energy is going out. You know, because there is not a circle here. So the moment you bring people together, there's a lot of energy contained there. And that's why we do DSMs in a circle, not a square or something else. Yeah? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. But <laughs> because anyway, I want you guys to go to respective uh, boards. So how many people are there in each group? So you guys have divided? You have Shikant, you have here, here, this group? Okay, we have seven here. We have how many? You have seven and then yes? Seven, this group? Eight. Eight? Oh, that's wonderful. Anyway, that's great. So what I want you guys to do is, uh, there are these four personalities, right? So the first exercise for you guys is, I want you guys to draw an image of this personality. Okay? So I'm going to give, uh, uh, should I go with uh, perennial cynic for you? No, no, I'm not saying you guys are cynic. I'm just giving a random thing. Perennial cynic, which is like, I'm not okay, you're not okay. okay. All right? So visualize this person and draw. And I want all of you to take a, at least you should draw one hand or one finger or whatever. 
Yeah, but I want all of you to do it. And then uh, Pia, what do you want? Yeah, be, so there are no damsels in the team, so I'll give this first damsel for you. I'm okay. okay you are okay. No, 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 it's not that. <laughs> it's like, I am not okay and you're okay. Alright? Okay. So uh, this team, uh, uh, should I give pragmatic adult to you? Like, I'm okay, you're okay? Alright, so what is left? Yes. So you're going to take that insolent genius. Alright? So you can just move the, move the board this way so that everybody can see your board. Alright? So imagine this person, visualize this person and draw this person. So the time starts now. I'm just going to give five minutes for this exercise. So quickly imagine this person and draw this person. And what else? Shinika could be angry or Joe. Besides, energy is not dissipated. See, right now, this is where all the energy is going out. You know, because there is not a circle here. So the moment you bring people together, there's a lot of energy contained there. And that's why we do DSMs in a circle, not a square or something else. Yeah? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. But, <laughs> but anyway, I want you guys to go to respective uh, boats. So how many people are there in each group? So you guys have divided? Your Shikhan, your Gya, yours, this group? Okay, we have seven here. We have how many? You have seven, and then yes, seven. This group, eight. Oh, that's wonderful. Anyway, that's great. So what I want you guys to do is uh, there are these four personalities, right? So the first exercise for you guys is I want you guys to draw an image of this personality. Okay. So I'm going to give. Uh, uh, should I go with uh, perennial Sunny for you? No, no, I'm not saying you guys are cynic. <laughs> I'm just giving a random thing. Perennial cynic, which is like, I'm not okay, you're not okay. okay. Alright? So visualize this person and draw. And I want all of you to take a, at least you should draw one hand or one finger or whatever. Yeah, but I want all of you to do it. And then, uh, Pia, what do you want? Yeah, I'm not so there are no damsels in the team, so I'll give this first damsel for you. I'm okay. okay you are okay. No, 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 it's not that. <laughs> it's like, I'm not okay, and you're okay. Alright? Okay. So uh, this team, uh, uh, should I give pragmatic adult to you? Like I'm okay, you're okay. All right. So what is left? Yes. So you're gonna take that insolent genius. All right. So you can just move the move the board this way so that everybody can see your board. All right. So imagine this person, visualize this person, and draw this person. So the time starts now. I'm just gonna give five minutes for this exercise. Hmm. So quickly imagine this person and draw this person. And what else? Shinika could be angry or Joe. Huh? He's like, he's like... Uh, all the team members, just one second please. So while you're, oh, you have an image and you are actually drawing that? Okay, that's nice. I, I saw her having an image in the mobile. Yeah. Is it your boss? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so what I want you guys to listen, also write the characters and attributes that you would associate with them. What qualities do you associate with them? Okay? Write the qualities and the person.
demotivated okay all right and he will find faults in everybody right okay for example uh, he'll say that the family is not you know hmm. uh, supporting uh, supporting him right? okay they are going against uh, they are not you know, agreeing to his terms and conditions okay even his peers are not with him all right okay his boss is not with him. his boss is not with him <laughs> okay all right and ro w is rest of the world okay rest of the world yes yes and i'm paying i've seen it like million times <laughs> Yes, I got it. Thank so you. So, so anything else? Key word is unsatisfied. Unsatisfied. Key word is unsatisfied. Very nice. Okay. Yes. Here. Okay. Uh, this is I'm not okay. You're not okay. And we feel that he he is also not happy with the world, and the world is not happy with him. Okay. So he's sad and he's a sadist. Okay. And uh, because he's in always in, he's in such a situation, he can be a devil's advocate and he can be innovative. Okay. He can so come up with some rebellion and okay. come up with some good. option because he wants to change everything because he is not okay in the world is not okay okay and he can be misunderstood so those are the core best qualities about him that's very interesting yeah. so one of the important aspects is even though we have these personalities it doesn't mean that one is better yeah. than the other yes. right probably yes. in short what we can say is he's an extreme kind of a guy maybe too depressed or kind of a too innovative person like that okay. you have a personality you have a personality yeah. steve jobs or oh, steve jobs <laughs> 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 okay, I have never been back to that. I wouldn't know. So, uh, anything else? And then he's aloof. Okay. And uh, he thinks differently. He thinks differently. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you. So, what about this team? You guys need to say more. Like, you need more. Like, it's already there. Yeah. You can explain. Yes. Okay, so, this person is. I am okay. You are not okay. So okay. He believes or.
just move around and go to the board where you think the person that you have problem with today falls in. It could be a manager, it could be a team member, it could be a colleague, it could be an employee, anything. Can we quickly move around? Go to a quadrant or go to the board where you think they will fall. So this is I'm not okay, you're not okay. And here is I'm not okay and you're okay. And then I'm okay, you're okay. And then I'm okay and you're not okay. Alright, so let's see. So if you have a problem with that person, what are the problems happen? What is the joke I <laughs> All right, so we have uh, I'm okay, you're not okay. Then uh, can I see some demarcation here? So, so there's nobody here. You guys don't have problems with these people. There's no I'm not okay, you're not okay, and there's no I'm okay, you're okay. No. Sorry. They are not at the top. They are not at the top. The top problem is this person. Arvind <laughs> Kejriwal. Okay. That's why he got it. So you're, uh, So what is your problem with I'm okay, you're okay? You don't like people being in the quadrant. You don't like Mahatma Gandhi. No, no, no. I, I, so what I want you guys to do is today you'll have a problem with a team member, right? Today it could be a colleague, it could be a business partner. Where do you think they fall in? They're, you're making an assumption now. You're making a judgment that which. Quadrant they will fall. I want you guys to move to that quadrant. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Okay. All right, okay. So, are you all from Delhi? <laughs> okay, I didn't say that either. <laughs> so, yeah, please quickly move. Where are you guys? Like, no, I'm still here. You still feel you have a problem with I'm okay, you're okay. The person? Everybody in this team? So there's a demarcation here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to quickly do is uh, I'm going to quickly run through the qualities. Uh, you guys are okay to stand, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can just look at it if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe each of these qualities in the individual. So I want you guys to stand in the quadrant for some time because I have one more thing to do. Uh, so if you just look at this quality, the insolent genius. I'm okay. You are not okay. Which is which quadrant? Right. So some of the qualities are they are overconfident, they are like the know-it-all, they believe that they know, they know everything and they have, they do not listen and they are generally dominant because they believe that I'm okay and you guys are not okay, right? And then what is their theme? Their basic theme in life is to get rid of, you know, they want to get rid of people around them because they believe, you know, I'm good, I'm complete by myself. <laughs> and their payoff, so what do I mean by payoff is, uh, so all of us, uh, as individuals, we have something that we collect, you know, like have you seen people who always like to be sad? Like always say that, oh, this happened to me, you know, that happened to me. And you know, like say, uh, always there is something about my mother-in-law did this, my husband did this, and all that, right? Complaining so, and grumbling all the time. Complaining and grumbling. That's, that's your status. Mm -hmm. That's your payoff. And there are people who are constantly angry. Like this angry young man, I mean, Amitabh and Tai, you know what they typically say. You know, they generally have these qualities about, uh, they be in that state because that is their payoff. That is their comfortable situation to be in. I'm comfortable being in that state because I'm used to it like how we are comfortable being in waterfall because we're used to it, like that. So what are the strategies? Some of the strategies that we can adopt is uh, we can build trust and mutual respect. This is a very, very important process and it's going to take a while. I'm going to explain a few tools. Unfortunately, not in this exercise. Uh, I want you guys to go and do some research and understand about the tools. Or you can write to me, I can explain it to you. So some of the common uh, workshop things that I use with my team is I use these techniques. Uh, one is called as a tool chart technique, another one is professional and psychological contract. So contracting is a very good business here because you uh, talk to them, talk to them as a team and then believe our uh, strategies. You just develop, you know, what are the things that I'll be doing today. Uh, we always do admin and uh, uh, professional contract, by which I mean is we always plan on the meetings properly. We always say, okay, this time, this time of the day and all that. But what we technically don't do is we just don't ask individuals if they are okay to do this meeting. You know what I mean? We generally tell people that, okay, go ahead and do the meeting, but we don't ask them, are you really okay to do this meeting? Because without their concern, this is not going to happen, right? So one of the things that I demonstrated in the workshop was, initially I, I told you guys what I'm going to do, and I gave you an option to walk out. That is because if you guys are not interested, there's no point in being in the session or doing any meeting for the part. You can apply this in your retrospectives as well. Uh, there's a very interesting book on Agile Retrospectives. If someone has read, it's very, very good for you. Another one is sandwich strokes. So sandwich strokes are very important. Any, anybody give sandwich strokes here? You know what is a stroke? Uh, just to say that, okay, you look very handsome today. 
All right, it's a sample store, right? But the moment you say, you look very handsome, but, you know, the idea about looking handsome, if he is not so handsome as you would otherwise, right? What you can do in a sandwich stroke is always try to tell them what exactly they are doing, especially if you are in the management. Uh, try to talk to them about what exactly they are not doing, but don't dilute it with too many good things. You know, sometimes I've heard managers, because the team member is like super good, they are genius, they're really good at what they're doing, they go and talk to them saying, oh, you are like amazing, you're like doing this job and everything, but you know what, you should be a little nice to people. You know, they just put it in one sentence, the impact is not so much. So always be careful with sandwich strokes, but use it. And then trust exercise, which anyway I'm not going to do today, we'll do another day. And egogram is also another tool that you guys can develop. So I'm not running through all these things because it was not in the scope of the workshop. But these are some of the tools. It's available online, you can look for it. But be careful when you exercise it. Yeah? Any questions on this or I'll move on to the next slide? Anyone? Okay. So the next one is distressed damsel. It's like, I'm not okay, you're okay. They're usually submissive, subservient silent and not very confident and their theme is always to get away from you know they just want to get away from people because they don't feel very confident about them and then their payoff is embarrassed you know they feel nice to be embarrassed when i say nice to be in embarrassed it's their comfortable state you know some of them prepare to do it have you noticed there are certain team members who ask for trouble in some of the meetings you know you know that okay you should not be saying this in the meeting but still they would go ahead and do that you know those are certain uh, life scripts and what are the strategies uh, give them very positive strokes and be supportive, be compassionate and very strong. This is very important because the moment we see a personality like this, what you guys start doing is you become like super nice to them and in the process the work is not done. So be very compassionate with them but at the same time be very strong, tell them and be assertive basically, tell them what has to be done. Give responsibility and allow mistakes. This is a very important quality in Agile because you have to let people make small mistakes and always remember the dry principle which is don't repeat yourself. Be creative and make new mistakes, but don't make the old mistakes again. Yeah? And what are the tools? Again, two chair, psychological contract, one-on-ones, positive strokes, and egogram. What is the third category, which is perennial cynic? Uh, where it is? Here. The monkey man. So we have, uh, they are cynical, they are regressive, they are passive-aggressive, futile, and uh, go nowhere with, and they like the payoff is being humiliated. You know what is very important here? This is the most difficult personality type to deal with. You know why? Any idea why? They don't think they are capable of changing the state. They don't know what they want. Yes. So basically they think that nothing will work in this world. You know, if you tell them any suggestion, they will say, no, this will not work. No, 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 this will also not work. But they will not tell you what will work. So what is important with them is, uh, you have to be very logical, be very solution focused when you talk to them. Talk about options and help them pick an available option, because that's very important. And again, the tools are two chair, uh, contracts, and value versus practice mapping exercise. This is a very interest, interesting thing, because when you generally go through agile transition, there are always these old timers who believe that this process works very well for them and they don't want to change. So one of the exercises you can do with them is value versus practice. Ask them. What is the practice you're following? What is the value? Or rather, go the other way around. Ask them what value you want to achieve. Does your practice allow you to achieve this value? And be assertive and ask them, if this is not allowing, what will you do next? You understand what I mean? Like say if somebody tells you your DSMs are not working today, understand the value behind DSMs. Ask them, okay, if DSMs are not working, what would you give as an alternative to achieve the value? All right? Any questions or is it more to the next slide? Okay, pragmatic adult. So this is the ideal state supposedly. They are positive, they are open to ideas, they are assertive, forward-looking, solution-oriented, non-judgmental. They are active listeners, very different from being a listener, active listener. And then they act on here and now. So you understand here and now, right? Most of my decisions today will be based on what is happening today and now. It's not like, okay, in the last sprint, I know what you did to me, so this sprint, I will do this to you. This is not here and now. And this is a common characteristic you will see, even though people may not talk about it, you will know that they technically do it. You know, let's say, they kind of sabotage the release in the process, so the coaches and the team leaders can be very careful about it. You can start doing some practices with it. So what is the theme? The usual theme is to get on with. You know, nothing can put them down. You know, if nothing is, something is not working, let's look at the next best option. Let's not get stuck with it. They're joyful and jubilant. They are healthy space to be in. In fact, most of the leaders, every successful person that you come across, all of us are successful, I think. And all of us have these traits of I'm okay and you're okay. 
all right so what is very interesting is it is not like each characters have a specific individual it's not like i'm always i'm okay and i'm not okay or i'm i'm okay and i'm okay we all have all the four characteristics you guys agree yes, yeah. yes. all the four characteristics are within us right yes. so one thing that we do is uh, in emotional situations in distress situation in the situations where there's high stress we tend to exhibit one particular quality which will be one of these three it could be either i am not okay you are not okay or i am okay you are okay uh, or i am not okay and you are okay it will not be that and we all exhibit all these four qualities but uh, all of uh, like, from these four one would be the default one in which we remain most of the time yes what would be the most common recurring pattern for you so the important part in doing this exercise is self awareness you know possibly the next exercise i would do is uh, uh, which i'm not doing today but what i would like you guys to do is think for yourself and see where will you fall in i'm sure it is not that none of us are there like i mean anybody because there is always a situation where we would go back to one of these quadrants so the first step towards progress the first step towards changing the behavior is to work on which quadrant that we fall in awareness is the first step So that's going to be the next thing that I want you guys to do. Uh, so you guys are clear? You guys are clear with okay, okay, Coral? Yes. You have a question? Oh, have a question there? Okay. Absolutely. So when you say your manager is okay, right? Like say, like I'll take this example. Is it fine just to describe it to the group? So he says that he knows that his manager is correct, right? So manager is wrong. He uh, he is wrong, right? So the answer your question. Yeah. Cool. So that's pretty much, guys. So I'm just done. So the last thing is about the self awareness because this four quadrants doesn't stop there because you guys have to apply it to yourself and then see where you stand. Try this exercise with your teams, and there are fantastic tools which are available online. I think it might work for you. What is the yes. two-chain technique? Uh, so what I do with uh, two-chain technique is uh, we have a conversation with individuals. Let's say if you have a conflict, you have a very conflicting situation with a team member. Especially these techniques are important in situations related to promotion, where you have a lot of stake involved, uh, because that's when people get really worked up. So what I do is I just put two individuals, like one person. Let's say if I have a problem, I put them on a chair, and then I ask them to switch roles. It's basically a role-play exercise, and they talk about the positives and the negatives of doing this particular action. You know why you think? Let's say if I'm a manager, if I'm an employee, there's an employee. Employee feels the manager didn't give me the right rating. So now I ask the employee to perform the role of the manager as well as employee. So this is actually a very crucial technique because uh, you have to be very careful about the safety nets. Or uh, you can read about it online. It's a very fascinating. Thing. <coughs> so that's pretty much, guys. So I'm done. Uh, any questions, or else we can close. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Before we leave, so now that you guys have understood. these qualities like say what is exactly it is you guys have chosen a quadrant would you like to change the quadrant or you want to remain in the same quadrant remain in the same <coughs> you remain in the same quadrant no change for anyone they want to do self realization they want to do self realization okay all right you know what is very interesting uh, the last group that i attended in bangalore when i did a similar exercise i had like about 70% of the people here and so which means delhi has a different dynamics perhaps <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> All right guys so thank you so much thanks for attending Highly enjoyed by him Yeah done yeah thanks so much